It's a dark night in Crisp County, Georgia. Deputy Stephen Rankin pulls over a driver for blasting his stereo. About 2 o'clock in the morning, I wanted to stop the car simply just to tell him to turn the music down. So it was extremely loud. What gets me is he stops in the middle of the road. And I suspected possible DUI. The man isn't drunk. He's career criminal Ben Westbrook, and he has a gun in his lap. Rankin approaches the car. I never saw it coming. All I see is a blast. My face went completely numb. I basically blacked out. My initial thought was I, I died. That was it. Westbrook steps out to finish the job. But his gun locks up. He gets frustrated and starts pistol whipping me in the head. Kicking me in the upper body. It was like a wake-up call. As Rankin fights to stay conscious, the felon gives up on his weapon. He knows there's another one nearby. I felt the tug on the side of my belt. I knew that he was grabbing for my gun. I roll over to protect my gun. He was intent on trying to kill me any way possible. I got up as fast as I could and uh, run to my car, pulled my gun out. I wanted him dead right then. <laughs> 16 rounds in our blocks, and I shot 16 of them at him. 15 of them hit the car, but none of them actually hit him. As the suspect races away, the deputy collapses, slowly choking to death. I could feel the blood and the flesh and everything draining down into my throat. Like everything just blew up in my mouth. Several miles away, Fellow officer Ben Bray is already responding to the terrifying sounds from the radio. I hear him in a scuffle. I'm not quite sure what's going on. I know something is wrong. Seconds later, Rankin's voice is heard. <laughs> I couldn't believe that this was actually happening. And all I know to do right then is pray. You know, I say, God, please let me get to him. Bray races up to the scene and comes upon a numbing sight. I see blood. I see teeth. Uh, I see his glasses. He says, is my face gone? I, I want to know. I can't feel my, my right side of my face. Only an entrance wound is visible. The real damage is hidden inside. Bullet entered in just under my nose. The top teeth on my right side of my jaw are gone. It went in between my windpipe and the main artery and hit my C1 vertebra and fractured my C1 vertebra. As medical personnel arrive, the APB goes out across the county. The would-be killer is captured the very next morning. He kept using his cell phone, and we were able to, to ping his cell phone and get his location. Westbrook is sentenced to the maximum time allowable for his attempt on the officer's life. 63 years. I definitely believe he deserves a lot more. The only way I can describe him is, is not quite human, more animal than human. Deputy Rankin makes an astonishing recovery from this stone-cold attack. A miracle that he credits to his deceased father. My father, he, he came to me that night. Um, he's been my guardian angel for about since 1994. He, you know, kind of told me, you know, it's time, it's time for you to fight back.
Denton County, Texas. A deputy pulls a reckless driving suspect out of his vehicle. Sergeant William Townsend provides backup. I arrived on scene, pulled in behind the suspect's vehicle, which was a blue Chevy truck with Oklahoma plates, and observed Deputy Byram speaking with the subject. The driver is John Pate. The truck is stolen. The officer is prepared to do a registration check. Pate gets ready to run. Mr. Pace started looking uh, north to south, uh, appearing to what we call having a little rabbit in him. The suspect spots a possible escape. The unmarked police car next to his truck has been left with the engine running. Pate goes for it. Hey, man, get back over here. I think running was a spur of the moment thing. I think stealing the deputy's car was a spur of the moment thing because his vehicle was blocked in. Get out of the car! Get out of the car! The deputy is outraged. They're chasing one of their own high powered police cruisers, and the fugitive is outrunning them. Pate swerves into a ditch. Other units join the chase. The outlaw blazes at over 100 miles an hour. Officers call for spike strips. There's just one problem. The car thief hears every word. The deputy's radio very well may have been monitoring the traffic that we were sending out. Pate plots a detour. He tries to turn onto a dirt road. The stolen Crown Vic crashes. Pate still has a touch of rabbit in him. But his wild escape ends in the sights of a police pistol. Some of the statements that he made after being restrained by the constable and the pilot point officers was that you know, he was looking forward to going back to prison and that he would have a nice story to tell them. But cops make sure this sneaky crook's crime story has an unhappy ending. Columbia, South Carolina. Sergeant Sean Stankus has had a busy afternoon catching speeders. I was assigned to routine patrol. I was working traffic on I-20. With this many vehicles on the freeway, fast drivers are especially dangerous. How are you doing? But maybe not as much as the ones who've been drinking. I just remember the shock of the impact when the side view mirror and the door handle of the truck struck me as I was standing beside the vehicle. But the officer has only one thought. Don't let him get away. The trooper tears onto the highway. He races past an exit and discovers where the culprit has gone. He was at the top of the ramp. I was able to see the truck. Stankus does a quick about face, turning the wrong way up a freeway entrance. Around the next curve, he comes upon a surprising sight. Witnesses to the hit and run have already cornered the suspect. Between these two vehicles, they were able to box this truck in. They basically made the traffic stop. The offender is a blubbering mess. The sergeant yanks the man from his vehicle and slaps on some cuffs. He was very drunk. 
The driver is convicted of felony DUI and will spend the next 11 years in jail. The Samaritans watch the arrest amazed that the trooper is even standing. They believe that I was killed on the interstate. Stankus' only injuries are bruises to his pelvis and arm and a friction burn. Miraculous given the circumstances. You're just talking a matter of inches between me being able to conduct this interview and other officers having to attend my funeral. But that same thing is going to be the one that's going to be Tyler, Texas. It's the end of Trooper Joseph Hogue's shift. He spots a driver not wearing his seatbelt. The offender doesn't pull over. Incredibly, he motions to go around. Trying to pull up beside him, trying to motion for him to pull over. And the driver came to a sliding stop. Both cars are in the middle of the road. Hogue's all alone. There's no backup for Miles. Get out. Put your hands on the car. Then. The driver's crazed out of his skull on PCP. Hogue muscles the blabbering druggie into a half Nelson and tries to pull him down. Hogue needs help. He never radioed his position. Worse, there's another suspect in the truck. The passenger yells for his wasted pal to cooperate. But the fight goes another round. Hogue uses every ounce of strength to control the lunatic. Even pepper spray can't stop the madman. It was obvious to me that he had, you know, quite some strength. It's kind of an all-out war in the middle of the road. Finally, he grabs the car's radio to call for help. 1493, Tyler, give me. Somebody, somebody, help! Now it's a battle of who will last the longest. You're not going to win. Don't move. What is he on? Whatever you got to more than alcohol. Help finally arrives, just in time for the exhausted hoe. My mom is the devil. The blitzed perk gets hauled by three cops into a squad car. It's his second and last trip of the night. Deputy Shannon Mitchell stops a speeding motorist. He doesn't know that the driver, Daryl Wilson, is an ex-heavyweight prize fighter. Five foot seven Mitchell is not only overshadowed by half a foot, he's outweighed by 100 pounds. The deputy begins searching Wilson for weapons. Then all hell breaks loose. tried to come up off the car and turn around. I attempted to push him back down on the car and he came up again and spun around on me. That's when I pulled out my uh, pepper spray and you know, took a few steps back and sprayed him with pepper spray. And as he's coming at me, the only thing he said to me was, you're going to need more than that. With no choice but to use deadly force, Mitchell draws his gun and fires. He misses. His second shot is a direct hit at point blank range. The suspect takes a bullet to the abdomen. 
yet incredibly keeps fighting. I'm thinking, wow, I've already shot him once. Now what's it going to take to stop him? Mitchell pulls the trigger for a third time, but the gun jams. The boxer wrenches the weapon from his hand, but it won't fire. He then comes at me again, starts striking me with the weapon. I was thinking to myself, this sucks. He's going to kill me. The brawl rages on for over a minute. The deputy breaks free. It's long enough for him to recover his firearm and radio. He hits Wilson with his pistol. When I was striking him with the firearm, it was like the pepper spray and the gunshot wound. It seemed to just make him matter. Finally, backup arrives. Daryl Wilson is arrested and sentenced to 15 years for aggravated assault. During the attack, Mitchell's head is severely lacerated. Ended up looking like I went about 10 rounds with Mike Tyson. I'm most grateful that, that he didn't take my life or didn't kill me there that day. Oh. Oh. Barling, Arkansas. This DUI may be off the streets, but she's still on the warpath. Are you so stupid you don't know I'm drunk? No, I know you are. She was agitated from the minute that the handcuffs went on to her. Well, I would think that you would be more interested in getting handcuffs than these doing this lesson on children and killing our children. An off-duty cop tries to put her in her place. I wouldn't have. Her behavior was coming more and more and more uh, aggressive. The woman is about to learn she should have quit while she was behind. She stood up, reached across the desk, and uh, with both hands in a sweeping motion, tried to slap me. I just used an armbar technique and took her to the ground. The boozy brawler is handcuffed to a bench. But she's still full of bluster. I will blow you. Get off your shoulders. It'll all be one big, blurry, bloody man, and you deserve it! She threatened to physically kick my, my butt. Scott takes the woman to detention, what? knowing there's a good chance she won't remember any of this tomorrow. Fortunately, the video is proof that her alcoholic rampage wasn't confined to the street. Oak Ridge North, Texas. Officer Mark Brockoff pulls over a speeding car. You never know what's going to happen on a traffic stop. He can never let your guard down. That's when you're going to get hurt. The motorist makes a shifty move. He exits the car and drops something on the road. With one hand on his gun, Brockoff approaches the suspect. But the driver has second thoughts. Brockoff smashes the window with a flashlight. But it's not enough to stop the defiant renegade. I'm running alongside the driver's door, banging on the window. I can see both occupants looking up at me. They look scared to death. The traffic stop takes an even more bizarre turn as the pair makes one of the slowest getaways ever. 
thought that was kind of odd. Usually when somebody runs from you, they punch it and take off. A couple hundred yards later, the driver pulls over for a second time. I could see a lot of movement inside the vehicle. I knew they were about to do something, but I didn't know what. I don't know what he's doing. He's stopping now. He just popped something. The passenger hurls a plastic bag out the window. He just popped something. Brockoff moves in. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Stay in the car! Stay in the car! Get back in the car! Get in the car! Get in the car! Get in the car! Get in the car! Stay there! He turns his back as if he's going to jump over the concrete barrier. I guess he notices that it's probably about 40, 50 foot high. He didn't want to jump. Stay there! Get in the car! You better stay right there, man! You better stay right there! It's one way to get shot! You didn't do that to have you say you talk something over the damn wall! You want to tell me again you didn't do anything? Shut up! Stay down! Stay down! Stay down! Stay down! Get down! My hands were tied. I couldn't get onto the radio because I had one at gunpoint, and then I was fighting with a driver. Get here, baby! Backup arrives for the lone officer. Both men are taken into custody. What did you talk? Police find alcohol and the tossed item. We have a positive response for cocaine. They also discover something more dangerous than drugs, a loaded gun. I know when I found the weapon, my heart just dropped. The driver's charges are dismissed, but as for his passenger, Carlos Gomez, He's sentenced to three years in jail for possession of a controlled substance, possession of a firearm, and aggravated assault. I realized how bad this could have been. He could have easily shot me in the back, and I wouldn't be here right now. Get in the car! Lima, Ohio. A motorist turns down several streets in a feeble attempt to evade a patrolman. He's quickly located, parked in a nearby alley. The deputy approaches the car. With no identification, the officer runs the plates. David North, two five and discovers the vehicle is connected to a recent kidnapping. Who started this? The policeman isn't about to take any chances. I want you to sit there. Keep your hands where I can see. He begins to handcuff the suspect. Now, let me cut on you just right now. Don't even sit there. But the man has other ideas. I did not get this. As the driver pushes past the officer, the cop draws his taser and fires. The outlaws electroshocked into 50,000 volts of submission. Turns out the fleeing man is not a kidnapper. He borrowed the car. He was simply trying to avoid a ticket for a suspended license. Keep your hands where I can see. A foolhardy decision that could have cost him his life. Wichita, Kansas. It's just after midnight when Deputy Tom Frenier pulls over a speeding van. But even routine traffic stops like this one can turn dangerous in the blink of an eye. There's some kids coming back from the lake, and I was just standing there uh, talking to them. But the guy behind the wheel has a problem. 
You got a driver's license. Why you got it? I got it. You ain't got any license, period. It's an offense Premier could bust them for, but he just wants to make sure there's nothing more serious going on. My intention is just find out, who, you know, who was out at one o'clock in the morning if they were out doing anything they weren't supposed to. Do you know he doesn't have a license? You lied to him. You lied to him and now. Now, uh, come on, man. But just when Premier is getting to the bottom of one story, a second one unfolds. I saw it and it was over. It was just like that. A drunk driver is so far off the road, she collides with the passenger side of the van, knocking the officer out into the street. I ended up in the middle of the four-lane uh, roadway. It dazed me, I guess, for a little bit, but um, I got up and got out of the street so I didn't get run over by any other cars. Yeah, I'm all right. Premier shakes off the pain in his arm when he hears the cries of the van's battered passenger. He was really worked up. He was in a lot of pain. He was screaming. Rescue personnel arrive to treat the wounded. But the drunk driver isn't one of them. She has only a scratch on her knee. Later on, she asked why I hit her. I don't think she even realized what happened. Incredibly, there are no life-threatening injuries from this horrific crash. Oh. And Premier knows how lucky that is. <laughs> yeah, my arm hurts like a I don't care. I got a little hit. I got worn out about halfway the road. I'm waiting for someone to come run me over. My daughter was about to turn two, and, you know, I knew I was going home to her in the morning. You're just happy to be alive. Someone is definitely looking out for me. Yeah, I'm all right. Camden County, Georgia. As Sergeant Greg Koffel finishes a traffic stop, a woman pulls up off camera with an alarming report. This woman pulled up behind me to, to let me know about the small red pickup that was possibly intoxicated. Koffel closes in on the suspected DUI, but instead of pulling over, the driver peels out. He pretty much let me know that he wasn't going to stop. Things start going through your mind, you know, why is he running? Is he running just because he's intoxicated? Has he just committed another crime somewhere? As he gets closer, the deputy spots trouble. I saw a, uh, which appeared to me to be a rifle of some sort. Right, I'm holding at gunpoint here. We're slowing down with. I knew that whatever was going to happen, uh, it was going to happen with just me and him. Suddenly, the suspect pulls onto the grass and comes to a stop. Get out of the truck! You better drop it! I see you! You better drop it! Koffel takes cover behind his door, waiting for the driver to emerge. Then, the man forces the cop to shoot. Drop it! You better drop it! Three shots from Koffel miss. The perp aims again but still doesn't fire. I was able to crawl to the back of my patrol car on my hands and knees. Left in drive, the pickup rolls into traffic. The gunman lurches forward. Koffel fires again. It didn't stop him. He was still coming after me. I thought about dying, and I thought about not seeing my wife and my little girl. It was either me or him. The gunfire abruptly stops. The battle is over. Down. Down. 
I fired three more times and, and made contact. The man never gets a shot off, which is very lucky for the officer. His weapon of choice was a powerful 30-30 rifle. A 30-30 rifle would, would have gone through the, the door of my patrol car and the vest that I was wearing. According to authorities, the suspect had apparently decided life was no longer worth living. But he took on a deputy who didn't feel the same way. Still to this day, it doesn't seem like it was real. I can honestly say that I'm glad that I'm the one that made it through it. Orlando, Florida. Officers make an unusual traffic stop. An unruly and undressed couple in a boat are causing quite a stir on the lake. Uh, you stand over there, please. Stay over there. The woman is not too happy about having her party interrupted by police. How did you stand up with your girlfriend? Come on. All right. Real. Real. You need to step off the boat. You and the whole Orange County Sheriff's Department. We pay your salary. Okay, ma'am. So, uh -huh. we're trying to have fun. We're naked. So what? But the officer suspects they've also been drinking. Don't move. Just stand right there. Stand right there, please. Stand right there. Ma'am, will you stand over here, please? First, it's the man's turn. He's asked to perform a challenging sobriety test. Recite the alphabet. G-H-I-J. Like that. Do you understand those instructions? From A to Z. Do you understand those instructions? You can't go that far? Okay, I don't have that education. Okay. They've seen enough with this guy. No, sir. You do Now it's time for the woman to take a stab. But the lady is so convinced she's sober, she actually starts doing her own tests. What are you doing? I'm going to hold my left out. No, that's okay. This is on an incline. Come on. That's all right. Listen. Come on. Stop. This is because I'm strong. Turn around. It's time for her to join her boyfriend in the back of the cruiser. Place me under arrest for DUI. For what? DUI. What's that? Voting under the influence, ma'am. But even under arrest, they remain defiant. I know people are powerful. Okay. I went to, I went all four of your names. I'm going to get your name. Right? Don't worry about it. It's all in a long day's work for an officer trying to keep the streets and the lakes safe from drunks. Turn around. Place me under arrest for BUI. Frisco, Texas. Officers pursue a possible drunk driver, weaving and speeding with a blown tire. The suspect pulls over. Cops hit the Mercedes with a spotlight. The woman isn't getting out. Instead, the vehicle shifts into reverse. Police rush the car with weapons drawn. Get your hands up! Hands up! Hands up! Get your hands up now! It could have been an accident, but the cops take no chances. Hands up there! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Officers make a shocking discovery. The driver is a respected city official. Police believe she stepped on the accelerator when she meant to hit the brake. She's lucky that assault won't be added to the charge of driving under the influence. Lake County, Ohio. Trooper Bill Davis makes a traffic stop along a busy stretch of highway. 
He's seen enough accidents in these situations to know two things. One, he should stand on the passenger side of the car. And two, he should keep a sharp ear out for the sound of squealing tires. Watch again. A car traveling 70 miles an hour loses control, slamming the stop sedan. Davis scrambles to safety in the ditch. But the struck woman screams in hysterics. Davis climbs back up to the road to check on her. She's rattled, but not seriously injured. The officer radios for assistance, grateful that he and everyone else involved has just dodged a major bullet. After all, when the crossfire consists of 3,000 pound automobiles, people don't always walk away. Denison, Texas. A stopped car on a country road arouses the suspicions of a patrolman. As the officer approaches, the driver tries to pull away. This car in park. Okay. You got your driver's license with you? No, I don't think I do that in my suitcase. Okay. All right. Step on back here with me. No, I don't. The man is unwilling to exit the vehicle. Step on back here with me. Now, pull him, uh, now, um, go ahead and step back here. The officer grows impatient. You don't have your license with you? It turns out the motorist is lacking much more than his license. He's stark naked. Well, I say why he is on your clothes, okay. He provides little explanation for his lack of attire. Well, it's just one of those deals. All right. You do this stuff right in the middle of the road all the time? Or? Oh, no, no, no. It's uh, both times in there. Okay. The indecent sight proves too appalling for the cop. Why don't you step up here and put underwear on or towel on or something? The man asks his equally bare-skinned date for clothes. The unclad Casanova is so intoxicated, he can barely put on his underwear. Even a passing motorist gets a peep show. Yeah. Yeah, I can see why it would be. Go ahead and step back here with me. The officer administers a sobriety test. Go ahead and start when you're ready. Arms down at your side. The driver's a quick fail. Well, Mr. Allen, it's very apparent that you're intoxicated. The man's arrested, but he won't be alone. I'm going to take a quick look at your eyes real quick. His girlfriend is charged with public intoxication. Turn around and put your hands behind your bag. The couple's next rendezvous is destined for the county jail. <laughs> Douglas County, Georgia. A car with illegally blacked out windows is pulled over by police. Deputy Lane Thompson instantly smells something suspicious. When I approached the vehicle, I immediately detected a smell of uh, burnt marijuana coming from the car. And while they were getting their license, on the passenger's lap, I could see uh, little bitty pieces of marijuana. Another patrol unit joins the deputy. He runs a records check. Suddenly... Yeah, he's there. The driver peels out. Both units give chase. Officer Ashley Sanders is in the backup cruiser. The uh, driver was darting in and out of traffic, hitting the emergency lanes. He was driving very aggressively. He was coming up on cars, bumpers, pretty much forcing them to get out of the way. And it continued at speeds of over 100 miles an hour. We did reach 120. The car spews a cloud of white. 
But it's not just smoke from the engine. It's also a stash of cocaine. At one point, they had opened the passenger side door. I started throwing cocaine out of the door because when he would throw it out the window at the high rate of speed, the cocaine was blowing back in the car. The suspects speed down the shoulder past a convoy of trucks. The driver of one of the 18-wheelers tries to help out. With us being on, on the interstate and on I-20, there's a lot of tractor shutter traffic, and I, I think the tractor shutter got involved by hearing the police chase coming by the other truckers talking on the CB. And this vigilante trucker has extra muscle. He's hauling a military combat tank. The big rig blocks them in. One suspect breaks for the woods. The other fugitive marches toward the cruisers. A police canine is on him in a flash. But in the midst of the confusion, something goes terribly wrong. I was uh, putting handcuffs on the driver when I felt a pain in my left foot. And I thought that the K-9 had bitten me in the back of the ankle. It's not the dog. It's the truck. As the big rig pulls away, over 10 tons of cargo rolls right over the deputy's feet. Both of my feet and both of my legs had an immediate burning sensation like I had my feet stuck in a hot fire. My mouth went cotton mouth. I, I don't remember. Jumping up, walking to the guardrail, I don't remember taking my, my shoes off. My body was in a state of shock. Officer Sanders apprehends the passenger in the woods. When he hears his colleague screams, I saw they were cutting his boots off, and I saw that his feet appeared to be flat, and they were bleeding. The deputy is fortunate. Doctors will not have to amputate his feet. But it takes months for him to recover. Both my feet were crushed. and both my feet, I have a deep bone bruising, severe nerve damage, and soft tissue damage. And in my right foot, I had one broken bone on the top of my foot. Officer Thompson is the only person injured in what could have been a fatal pursuit. It could have been a possibly a, a, big, a big wreck with the way the guy was driving. If the injuries I sustained was to save somebody else's life, I'm glad it happened to me. But it's not innocent getting killed. Huron County, Ohio. A state trooper pulls over a man for running a light. He has a van full of children and a family dog. When the man pulls out his license, the officer spots a wad of cash. How much cash are you carrying today? A couple thousand dollars for going to his family. The trooper is convinced he's hiding something. Well, back here. Get out of the room. She decides to search him. Oh, sir, I'm going to pack you down here, okay? Sure. Take your wallet back out. When she looks inside his wallet, the officer finds a fake ID. What do you have to, uh, hold up, hey, hey, don't ever touch me again, ever, okay, I'm not taking your money, you understand that, you touch me again, I'm going to make you, okay, don't you move. The suspect is clearly on edge. I'm not taking your money. The trooper radios for help. 16, Jared, 639. Too late. The crazed man screams gibberish about his children. The officer pulls a can of mace and blasts him. The shrieking suspect bolts for his van. The trooper maces him again. The officer heads for her cruiser. Unbelievably, the rampaging suspect is right behind her. Again, she's in mortal danger. The cop.
finally gets the hysterical man on the ground. The man slides toward the van's back wheel, just as one of his daughters tries to exit. Get out! Get in the car! Get your hands out of there! The trooper fears the frantic suspect might be reaching for a gun. Finally, the driver relents. Backup units arrive. Officers quickly discover why the man was so desperate. He was carrying a load of crack cocaine. Oh, they found crack. They just found crack. They just told me. The man's children are safely returned to their mother. The father, however, is headed to jail for assault on a police officer. SM 439 and 3219. It's the time of night when Trooper Abe Gonzalez sees more than his fair share of drunk drivers. How you doing? Hey. What's up, partner? Uh, well, we just get stopped. I noticed you swerving in now. You all right? I just wanted to make sure they weren't fatigued or asleep at the wheel or intoxicated. You been drinking tonight? <laughs> The trooper knows that getting tipsy motorists off the road is truly a matter of life and death. But sadly, the number of drunks driving on a given night is greater than the number of cops who can stop them. I notice uh, headlights coming my way. The only reaction that I had was uh, to move out of the way quickly. I knew that the accident was uh, severe, and I knew that there were going to be injuries. Gonzalez hurries to the wrecked vehicles. He checks on the struck occupants first. They're both alive, but badly shaken. They were seated in the front, um, but uh, the impact shove them to the back of the vehicle a second officer on site races to the sedan the scene there is even worse okay there were four people that were unconscious that were seriously injured they got metal back coming i already called them people who drink think they can get home without any problems you all right? You been drinking tonight? Despite Gonzalez's efforts on this night, it's a mistake these drivers learned the hard way. <laughs> Temple, Texas. Just moments ago, the man in this SUV was pulled over for not wearing a seatbelt. Instead of complying, he tried to run over the officer, triggering a terrifying pursuit. Officer Thomas Prado does his best to keep pace with the reckless suspect. I've been involved in a lot of pursuits. You just never know what's going what's to happen next. You don't want anybody to get hurt, so if you're playing, then nothing bad is going to happen. Prado and the other cops try to box in the madman. But he blasts through the cruisers like a battle tank. The suspect then races onto the highway. Oh man, this guy's gonna kill somebody. Officer Bobby Gutierrez joins the blistering chase. This had to be stopped and it had to be stopped immediately. It is no different than someone walking down the street with the loaded gun and randomly shooting a gun. In a bold move, Gutierrez tries to shoot out the SUV's tires with his assault rifle. 
The suspect responds by cranking up the danger. He barrels over the median at nearly 100 miles an hour, then rockets down the interstate in the wrong direction. Prado can't believe the horror he's witnessing. He gets on a bullhorn and pleads with the fugitive. Pull over, man! You're going to kill yourself! Come on, pull over, man! You're going to kill somebody! Come on! Pull over! I didn't think it was ever going to stop. And I was just hoping it wasn't going to stop in a bad way. Oh, damn. I'm going to need to get another car out there. Check him out. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Finally, the driver pulls back into the right lanes. Oh, my God. But Prado's got a new problem. Yeah, I'm running out of gas. Just then, the lunatic flies out of control. Cops swoop in. Prado gets the suspect on the ground and finds the man wounded. I look inside the cab of the, of the SUV and there is like, it looked like a ketchup bottle exploded inside the SUV. There was blood everywhere. The driver, Russell Farrell, survives and is now serving 20 years for aggravated assault. God was watching out after the citizens that day. It was a miracle. Nobody got hurt except for the bad guy. Gahana, Ohio. Sergeant Sheila Murphy pulls over a familiar driver for speeding. Throw your window down. The door. A man she's had trouble with before. We have a legal on you. You are in the car. Nice weapons, narcotics. Because we're not having a repeat of last time. You understand me? The last time she stopped him, the man resisted arrest. And it looks like he's ready for round two. I asked you a question. Answer it directly. I'm not answering. Get out of the car. I'm not answering. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Sir, you're under arrest. Sir! Sergeant Murphy pulls out a taser and calls for help. Step it up. Step it up. Step it up. Step it up. Backup cruisers speed toward the scene. Meanwhile, the hostile driver is showing no signs of cooperating. Get out of the car! I'm going to shoot you with this taser! Do you understand me? Get out of the car! Now! A curious neighbor walks over. He's ordered to stay clear. Step back! Step back! Get out of the car! Driving Get out of the car! The officer tasers the hulking suspect, but it only enrages him. He rushes from the car and attacks. <laughs> Two units race to Sergeant Murphy's aid. The offender has her in a headlock. Murphy's taser is knocked from her hand. The attacker seizes the weapon and gives the sergeant a jolt. He even grabs her mace and sprays the cops. But another shot from the taser does the trick. The suspect is wrestled under control and handcuffed. Sergeant Murphy's high voltage ordeal is finally over. The belligerent driver is lucky she chose to use non-lethal force, even though her life was in danger. Oh. 
Mayfield Heights, Ohio. Officer Andrew Rocco assists fellow patrolmen during a traffic stop. When I asked him to exit the car, I could see right there in, in his facial expressions and, and body mannerisms um, that, that fight or flight look in his face. Suddenly, the motorist guns it. With one hand on the door, Rocco is along for the ride. I took a couple steps alongside the vehicle and then realized if I was going to let go of the vehicle, there's a good chance I'd fall down and possibly get run over. Shots ring out. The van smashes head on into a building. I remember thinking, okay, I gotta hold on, I gotta hold on. The driver swerves in an attempt to throw Rocco from the van. But the cop holds firm. He then punched me in the chest three times and then leaned across the front uh, seats of the car and tried to kick me out off the side of his car. That's when Rocco fires four rounds at the suspect. I wasn't shooting to kill, I was shooting to stop. I wanted to stop the situation. The wounded man, Anthony Woodard, is taken into custody. His reckless decision to run costs him six years in the state pen. <laughs> Mebane, North Carolina. A patrolman stops a motorist for a moving violation. Suddenly, the man tries to exit the car. Put your hands on the car. Put your hands on the car. Put your hands All right. on the car. All right. The suspect's holding something in his hand. Put your hands All right. on the car. It's not a weapon. It's a wad of cash. I see it. Put your hands out. All right, sir. Drop it. All right, drop it. With bills in hand, the hoodlum tries to break free. But the deputy pins the man against the vehicle. The help. Then body slams him to the ground. Oh, my Hundreds of dollars litter the street. Get out. The officer keeps a firm grip. but still has no idea why the man started this fight. I need help! Put your hand down! Put your hand down! Backup arrives from not one, Put your hand behind your back. but two bystanders. The good Samaritans hold the culprit down. With a second officer on the scene, the outlaw is apprehended, and the cash is collected. But the real payday is in the car. There's a big plastic bag full of crap, big brick. Thanks to a couple of brave citizens, the drug dealer is off the streets. I think that can help you. Will you all to get your name? Put your hands on the car. Put your hands on the car. The pusher won't be getting back his money. But he will be spending time behind bars. Oh, my money. Get out! motorist is about to change Sergeant Ishmael Gonzalez's life. We received a call of a possible drunk driver swerving all over the road, uh, trying to run people off and throwing objects at people. As he approaches the car, Gonzalez has no idea that the driver is an armed ex-con who would rather kill than go back to prison.
I was able to say hello, and that was about all I got out when the driver shot me. I immediately felt the pain in my chest. I was scared to death. I thought I was not ever going to see my family again. I'm not going to see my wife and kids. The officer retreats and fires back, shattering the Jeep's window and mirror. As the suspect flees, the sergeant breathlessly assesses his wounds. I immediately checked myself to see how bad the injuries were by actually feeling in my chest, reaching down inside my shirt, refilling for bullet holes. Thankfully, Gonzalez is wearing his bulletproof vest. It's the only thing that keeps him alive. And if I had not been wearing my vest, those two bullets would have struck my vital organ. And I probably would have died, well, no problem, I would have died at the scene within a few minutes. The gunman races away, but a massive manhunt soon tracks him down. The individual was surrounded in a barn, in a shelter close by, and he subsequently took his own life. This dramatic video is a chilling reminder of the dangers braved by officers like Ishmael Gonzalez every day. At any moment, you could be faced with life and death situation, and next time you might not survive it. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Officer Todd Royval is in pursuit of a speeding driver. 60 and a 40. 64 on a block of late. But just as he's about to catch up. A motorcycle runs a red light. I saw the corner of my, a motorcycle drive through the red light. It scared me at first. I had just a split second to react, and then adrenaline took over. Royval swerves, pitching his cruiser into a dangerous slide. The breakneck biker hits the throttle. 237. Yeah, DUI motorcycle running from the northbound Lee Highway cross number 153. He just about hit me. He was all over the road. I knew he was a drunk driver. 237, we turn around. We're going to go southbound on Lee. Southbound on Lee. The biker wheels in circles. Royval has had enough. And decides to end it. I figured the speeds that we were going, that it would be safe for me just to tap him and knock him over. A sharp jolt to the rear tire is all it takes. He's on his ass! He's on his ass! Right now! 237, I got him in custody. The belligerent man clearly kicked back one too many. I've drunk a little bit, that's it. You drunk a lot of bit. No, I'm not a lot of bit. His blood alcohol level came back to 0.12. He was so drunk he didn't have any comprehension what he did at all. The light was green. The light wasn't green. If it was, it was me. It was green for me. The driver, Robert Rogers, is charged with driving under the influence. But if it wasn't for Royval's precise driving, it could have been lights out for this boozed up biker. If I would have hit that motorcycle at that speed, it would have been working a fatality. There's no way that a motorcycle would have been able to, a rider on a motorcycle would have been able to take that hit. Knoxville, Tennessee. Officer Dennis Bible and his partner, G.T. George, are on scene of a two-car accident. These motorists are the rain-slicked highway's latest victims. There were three that I know of accidents that happened uh, in that same spot the same day. I think that spot's dangerous because it's a very sharp turn. Uh, the roads were somewhat wet. I didn't do well yet. Bible and his partner are just wrapping up. When without warning, an SUV screams out of control. When I heard the uh, the noise, I, I didn't look. I, I knew what it had to be. It wasn't going to be good. I just ran. Not much time to think about things, really. Just kind of react. 
Officer George barely escapes certain death. My partner didn't take the time to look. It uh, was really close with him. He's a pretty sure guy. To this day, he doesn't want to talk about it. Bible makes a quick break for the woods, pushing two civilians out of the path of the careening car. Oh, hell. Remarkably, no one is injured in the crash. In this case, wet roads are not to blame for the near disaster. During this incident, the driver was distracted. Uh, evidence at the scene showed that he was uh, apparently uh, putting marijuana into a uh, cigar at the time. He's charged with reckless driving and possession of marijuana. Bible and his partner return to the road, knowing that danger can be just seconds away. You have to value life and live every day like it could be the last one, because we're not promised the next second. I consider myself very lucky. Dave, we're all here. We're all on the same side, buddy. Wycliffe, Ohio. A former cop turned security guard, David Stanko, is on an emotional precipice. Dave, 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 Dave. Look at my son, you got to worry about that. Dave, Dave, Dave. His girlfriend, who is the mother of his infant daughter, has decided to end their relationship. Now he's threatening to end his own life with a six-inch knife. Dave. Officers desperately want to end this without lethal force. They load their shotguns with beanbag shells. The weight of his misery makes him literally weak in the knees. Finally, he makes his decision. But it's not the one officers were looking for. Stanko removes his child's car seat, a sign that he's giving up all hope. Off camera, he puts the knife to his throat. Officers have to act now. A barrage of beanbags and pepper balls drives the unstable man inside his car and racing away into the night. The kid gloves are now off. Officers can't let his despair cause terror on the open road. A unit lays spikes at an intersection. His tire is blown. But his determination is not. He continues his frenzied flight, ricocheting off a telephone pole. The front tire explodes, grinding the metal rim in a shower of sparks. The hobbled car lurches to a stop. Stanko emerges and puts the knife to his head. But this time, police aren't negotiating. A second flurry of beanbags knocks him off his feet and convinces him to throw away his weapon. Cops swarm in and pull Stanko from his car. The ordeal is finally over. He won't be hurting anyone tonight. Thanks to the use of non-lethal weapons, he's able to receive treatment at a hospital before facing any charges. Santo Domingo, the Dominican Republic. A road rage incident turns into an armed confrontation. The driver inside this pickup flashed a gun at the man in the purple shirt. He had no idea that he was messing with an off-duty cop. 
Bystanders try to defuse the standoff. For a moment, the policeman lowers his pistol, a break from the tension. The driver starts to get out, but the argument flares again when he refuses to give up his weapon. The man finally surrenders. But as the cop tries to arrest him, he grabs the officer's gun hand. Passersby flee, knowing the weapon could discharge at any moment. A man who removed the gun from inside the truck tries to help. The enraged man tires and finally gives up. He prepares to leave, but incredibly, he wants his gun back. He returns to claim it. The police officer is wary, but the man who has his pistol allows him to take it, hoping to avoid more conflict. With no other officers to back him up, the off-duty cop relents. He's just thankful that no one had to die in this potentially lethal confrontation. Texas. How you doing back there? Just checking on you. I'm just checking on you. Okay. A drunk driver is on her way to jail. Now that she's off the streets, the only threat she poses is to herself. The intoxicated woman confides in the male officer. I have not had a child in years. Then sets her sights on the patrolman. You want it? You got it. You're a man, man. Her indecent proposal is strictly no strings attached. Tonight, the only action she'll be getting is fingerprints and a photograph. Followed by an aching reminder not to drink and drive. Where's my nose? County, Texas. Trooper Joe Hope stops a horse trailer with expired tags. How you doing? Good, how are you? Yes, sir. Your tags expired and you went to the tent. Two dogs. The work that came from the hospital today. It's two dogs. We have dog boxes and insurance car. We have dog boxes at home. The driver doesn't have his license or insurance. But it's his behavior that has Hogue gone edge. The stress level was so high, it, it, it did uh, make me a little bit more alert. What's the last name? What's the last name? He hesitated while giving her the information and made me think this guy may be giving me false information. I didn't feel comfortable leaving him up there at the cab of the truck. Come on back here, let me get the job off. The cowboy paces anxiously. Hogue asks one more question about the driver's record. Are you worried about it? Yes, a little bit. I can tell. What, what, what might be an issue? Suspension or line or what? No, what's the Uh, maybe a big one. A big one? Maybe, I don't know. My guard immediately went to the very next level. A blue warrant is a term in Texas that means you have been paroled from prison. You violated your probation. And you are being sent back to prison. But this is one ex-con who has no intention of going back to jail. Suddenly, he bolts. The man is so desperate. Coming into Hartford. 
that he makes a high-speed escape in a lumbering horse trailer. Up ahead, a cop throws down a spike strip. One tire is out, but the pursuit thunders on, blasting straight through the heart of town. It could spell disaster. We've now made the decision that this guy is a danger to society. And we need to do everything we can to try to catch this guy. More cruisers converge. But even with an army of cops on his tail, the felon still thinks he can make it. At some point, this guy is going to wake up and realize that he's not going to get away. Police fire rounds into his tires to grind him to a stop. The suspect panics. Parts of the truck and trailer fly off. Now two tires are blown. And the jailbird's flight from justice is about to be grounded. He fails on foot. But officers quickly nab him. Brent Poteet thought he could escape a return trip to jail. But that careless decision only added time to his stay in the big house. I do think this is the most wildest chase that I've ever been in. It was unbelievable. 